And just like that, my keyboard, mouse, and storage device all get routed to a Raspberry Pi running an emulator of Pokemon Blue for my Discord server. And just like that, I'm back on my PC playing Overwatch with my friends. Pretty cool, right? I frequently talk about how often we look at new, interesting, and weird gaming-related tech, and today, we have something that securely checks all three of those boxes. Pulsar's newest keyboard, the Xboard QS, is a 10 keyless gaming keyboard that has a neat little trick built right into it. And I haven't seen anybody else in the industry do this one yet, but with a $300 price tag, does it truly justify its premium status? Before we get into it, let's find out what's included in the box and what the typing experience is like. Pulsar always has great packaging. They clearly label everything you need to know while making it look really aesthetically pleasing. Included inside the box are two USB-C cables, a switch puller, a keycap puller, five extra switches, a velvet bag, a user manual, a brand sticker, and the Xboard QS. I actually really appreciate the velvet bag. I regularly bring my keyboards to and from work, so this is a nice touch for those of us that pack everything up and bring our keyboards out of our mother's basement. I've had this keyboard for a couple of months now, and after using it for that long, I have to say this thing is very, very well made. It's built like a freaking tank. The CNC machined aluminum body gives you a sturdy, premium feel that you can notice from the moment you touch it. The backside is an obvious statement piece in homage to their gaming mouse lineup. I think it looks pretty cool, but how do you guys think this is going to impact the sound? Let me know in the comments. It's clear that quality materials were used when manufacturing this board. The X board is a hecking chonker, weighing in at a hefty 1,480 grams. So it's safe to say this thing isn't moving anywhere on your desk. Wherever you plant this thing, that's where it's going to live. There are some notable mentions to include about the keyboard interface. On the top right, we have a media knob. You can roll it left or right to adjust your audio levels and tap it to mute audio. Located just beneath the knob, there's a dedicated key to switch between a Windows and Mac preset. This comes in handy for somebody like me who brings their MacBook to work. I was able to plug in my keyboard to my work Windows PC and my MacBook Air and switch between them pretty seamlessly. It's pretty neat to be able to plug in other peripherals such as a mouse or USB storage device and have that switched over to the other machine as well. I do really like that. On the website, only Windows and Mac OS are listed as the supported operating systems, but I've regularly used this to switch between my Windows PC at home and my Raspberry Pi. So even if it doesn't mention it on the website, it works just fine with Unix in my experience. This is a gasket mounted board. The gasket mounting gives you a slight flex and rebound with each key press. Gasket mounts always have the best sound profiles in my opinion. The pre-installed switches are Kale, Box Ice Mint V2 linear switches. These are south LED facing switches with a four millimeter travel distance. The switch is actuated with a gram force of 38 and bottoms out at a gram force of 50. They're smooth, responsive, pre-lubed from the factory and perfect for those who prefer a lighter touch when typing. But if you're not into these particular switches, the keyboard is hot swappable and is compatible with most three pin and five pin mechanical switches. The stabilizers do come pre-lubed, but for from what I can tell, these are friction fit stabs and not screw in stabs. I know some of you care about this, so I figured I'd mention it. It doesn't list it on the website, but I believe this is an OEM profile. At least that's how it looks and feels to me. And what do you guys think? Is it OEM or Cherry? Tell me in the comments. The keycaps are double shot black and white PBT. The LEDs will not shine through, which is okay with me. In my opinion, I think it makes it look a little classier. They're smooth, but have a coating on them. If you've used any of their mice, like the X2V2 or the X2H ES, the shell of these mice feels very similar to how these keycaps feel. The typing sound profile of the Xboard QS is phenomenal. It's not what I'd call thocky, but more of a deep clack, which is something I find incredibly satisfying. I left the keyboard stock and this is what it sounds like.
The obvious standout feature of the X-Board is its quick switching technology. And I gotta say, switching between computers is as seamless as it gets. This keyboard was originally designed for streamers with a two PC setup, and it definitely shows. The switching is controlled by the two black buttons at the top of the keyboard. The left button corresponds to the left USB-C output, and the right corresponds to the other. So if you're running two different machines, you just plug them both into this. You can even plug in your mouse and one other USB be accessory as well. When you press one of the buttons and switch between PCs, there is a brief moment of latency, but it's really no different than when you first plug in a USB device to your computer. Even though this is a niche keyboard built for two PC streamers, my use case is very different and I regularly used it as a daily driver between my PC and my Raspberry Pi 5. Basically, I installed and tested a bot that would host a group play of Pokemon Blue in my Discord server. It was a fun little project for our Discord server and the X-Board really helped me streamline the entire process. It was incredibly convenient to switch between my Pi and go back to my PC whenever I wanted to game with my friends. And speaking of gaming, one of the recent updates for this keyboard included enabling simultaneous opposing cardinal directions, or better known as SOCD. Everybody was basically calling this uh, feature cheats. The instructions for enabling SOCD on the X board can be found on the Pulsar website. The steps are simple and straightforward. Basically, you download the flashing tool in firmware. In the flashing utility, you select the firmware bin file, then unplug your keyboard and plug it back in while holding the U key. Once you do this, you'll be able to flash everything to the board. Once installed, you can activate SOCD by hitting the FN and left shift key simultaneously. Personally, I don't think this is needed for competitive gaming, but it's nice to see Pulsar keep up with modern keyboard trends, even after the release of their keyboard. Something to keep in mind though, is that since this is a mechanical keyboard, there's no rapid trigger or other features like that. But I was still having fun using it without that. When it comes to RGB, the Export QS offers 44 built-in lighting effects. It's all pre-programmed into the keyboard itself, meaning no software is required. While the onboard control is straightforward and somewhat easy to navigate. You can customize the RGB through the VIA software. This is an open source software that's compatible with QMK keyboards. I would like to see its own dedicated web UI based software in the future, however. Personally, I think this looks best with no LEDs on. It has a very sleek, minimalistic look to it, although I really do like the LED accent bar on the north side of the keyboard. So let's, let's just talk about the price for a second. At $299, this keyboard is poised for a very niche market of two PC streamers and enthusiasts. For comparison, the ASUS OG Azoth Extreme 75, which is also a full aluminum keyboard, will run a whopping $500. Just like the ASUS Azoth, it's not aimed for everyday users. Given that, the Export QS seems fairly priced by comparison, especially considering its build quality and incredibly innovative features. The seamless switching makes it ideal for streamers or multi-system users like me. Pulsar also has a fairly robust warranty of two years. They cover material and workmanship defects when the device is used as intended, so don't clean it in a dishwasher. Pulsar also includes a 10-day dead-on arrival warranty that allows you to swap out your product for another and if you're not happy with your purchase, there's a 30 day return window for purchases made directly through their website. You will, however, have to pay for shipping. If your product is out of the warranty window, Pulsar also allows you to send in your products to be repaired for a fee. And I'm actually pretty happy to see this. One of the things I hate is tech waste. And there's some other companies in the industry that are only adding to that issue. It's great that you can actually send this off somewhere to be repaired. With all of that being said, it's not without room for improvement. If Pulsar were to ever work out a V2 of this keyboard, I would really like to see a web UI for customization. Hall effect switches would also be really welcome so we could get access to things like rapid trigger. My biggest suggestion, however, and Pulsar, I know I know you're watching this, so please take this for consideration. Please move away from the adhesive rubber feet on the bottom of the unit. My only real complaint about this keyboard is in order to access the internals of the X board, you have to remove the rubber foot on the north side of the case. This is the only way to get access to the screen screw holes to take the board apart. Once you take it off, you have to clean up all the leftover adhesive residue in order to re-adhere the rubber strip 
back onto the case. And I had to end up using double-sided fabric tape to get the rubber strip back on the case, so it, it just seems a little silly that it gets in the way. I'd like to see Pulsar move to something like magnetic feet, sort of what Asus has done with the Azoth. I think that would be a nice touch and you would avoid the adhesive entirely. In conclusion, I really liked using this keyboard. The Pulsar Export QS is a niche product aimed squarely at enthusiasts and streamers. It's built like a tank, offers seamless switching, and has a typing experience that's both satisfying and comfortable. While there are a few areas for potential improvements, this keyboard delivers. If you're in the market for a premium keyboard that brings innovation to your streaming setup, or if you're just like me, a keyboard snob who switches between their main PC and a Raspberry Pi very often, then the Export QS is worth considering. Thanks for watching. As always, I hope you learned something, and until next time, GG.